Hi there guys, Ricky's Quickies. I'm going to talk to you about five essential arpeggios that you should know. Um, if you go back on some of my videos over the years, you'll see that I've done a whole ton of videos about these kind of arpeggios, but a lot of them are, are kind of geared toward um, the advanced player rather than the intermediate player. So I, I wanted to recap on this subject because I think it's extremely important to be able to to be really comfortable with these arpeggio shapes. Um, there are basically five arpeggio shapes that I'm going to talk about, and those are major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, and diminished seventh arpeggios. Um, one of the main reasons why they're important is because they kind of encompass pretty much everything you would ever need in order to play songs on the instrument. Um, um, and not only that, but they will afford you great opportunity to, be, to improve your improvisation, your fretboard knowledge, and so, so, so much more. So what I'm wanting to do is kind of backtrack a little bit on some of the stuff that I've done and just, you know, aim this at the intermediate player. So um, let's take a look at each arpeggio shape. And for now, I'm going to do more videos on this because it's such an important topic. You know, I won't be able to do enough videos on this. But for now, what we're going to do is just keep them in root position. OK, so that is... If we're playing an A major 7 arpeggio, we start with the root of that chord and play the arpeggio thusly. Exactly from the root. Okay. So <laughs> that's our first shape that we're going to deal with. So let me let me um expound on that a little further by explaining exactly what I'm doing here. So, uh, fret-wise, I'm playing five and nine on the low E, seven on the A, six and seven on the D. Now, here what I like to do is change the fingering up, so I'm using one and three uh, in anticipation of the next move when we cross strings. So, because um, that, that affords me the opportunity to deal with that particular change comfortably. So, nice and slowly. One, three. Okay, so that's the A major 7 arpeggio in root position. Let me just play it once more. with that chord okay and what I'm playing here is just a, a simple classic voicing of a major seven we have root major seventh third fifth okay <laughs> so let's move on to the next one and you'll notice that I order them in this way because it's so much easier to explain when you only have one note change from one arpeggio or one chord to the next we're dealing mainly with arpeggios here, so the main difference between an A major 7 and ar arpeggio and an A dominant 7 arpeggio is uh, we have a flat 7 in a dominant 7th arpeggio. So all we have to do is literally lower the 7th degree. So this is what we add for the A major 7. We're going to go just by taking the 7th degree, lowering it a step. And then we can apply the same thing. So here's, there's our major seventh here over the A, but we want a flattened seventh. So. Okay, so that's our A dominant seventh arpeggio. So fret five. Nine, seven, then here we have five and seven, and six, five, 
8 and so on, root uh, fret 5 of the top E string. Um, so that's our dominant 7th arpeggio, excuse me for laughing, they always just break up laughing doing videos, I don't know why. Uh, anyway, so the next chord to move on to, or next arpeggio shape, is a minor 7th arpeggio. And again, what we do is we take the dominant 7th and we change one of the notes, which gives us a minor 7th arpeggio. Okay, so what we're going to do is just change the 3rd degree of that dominant arpeggio and we end up with a minor 7th arpeggio, which looks like this. <laughs> more changing the fingering around here a little bit but never mind never mind um, so what do we have we have the first flat three five flat seven compared to the dominant which was first major third five flat seven okay so we're taking each third degree and lowering it and again all in root position this okay so let's move swiftly on to the next chord so we lower one more note what we're going to do is we're going to keep everything the same but we're going to lower the fifth degree this time so instead of one flat three five flat seven we're going to play one flat three flat five, flat seven, and then root. And we end up with a minor seven flat five arpeggio. Oops, daisy, sorry. There are other ways to play it, but I'm just gonna keep this nice and simple. You can explore different ways to play them on your own. Um, in fact, I urge you to do that. Um, so we have five, eight, six, five, seven, five, eight, and eight. This is a bit awkward. You can change this note. And uh, if you watched my previous video, uh, you see I do touch on this kind of thing where you can just change one note. Um, but anyway, I don't want to don't want to change direction too much here. Uh, so anyway, that's the minor seven flat five arpeggio. Okay, and then finally, we change from a minor seven flat five, which has the formula one flat three flat five flat seven. We're going to play a diminished seventh arpeggio, which contains. A one, a flat three, flat five, and double flat seven. And you'll know the sound of this. Very, very common um, sound, especially in sort of, you know, neoclassical rock and, and metal stuff. Um, but it's a very, very useful arpeggio. And uh, they're all, all connected. So these are arpeggios that you really should know. Uh, so just let me play each one successively, nice and steadily. So major seventh. So one, three, five, seven. That's the formula. And dominant seven. Five flat seven, okay. Minor seven. Formula one flat three five flat seven. Minor seven flat five. Formula one flat three flat five flat seven. Then diminished seventh. One flat three flat five double flat seven. Okay, so you have to practice these. 
remember this is just in one position this is just root position um, and because there are the each chord or arpeggio contains four separate notes we have four different inversions that we can play them in so this is just root position okay there's lots of area of the fretboard that we've got to fill up with these arpeggios but we'll get to that in due course okay i hope i've made some semblance of sense here um remember to the best way to support me is check out my website and download stuff from there link is in the description box below so if you do that thank you um otherwise i will see you in the next video cheers guys <laughs>